Hello, you're welcome. It's Henry, the computer guy, and this is our lesson number seven. Today, we are going to be looking at the characteristics or modern characteristics of a computer. What makes it a powerful machine? So, we are going to be looking at those eh, characteristics. And point one specifically talks about the speed. A computer processes information at extremely high speed. And this speed is actually measured in either gigahertz or megahertz, whereby one gigahertz is equal to a thousand megahertz. Whenever you go to buy a computer, first of all, look at the speed that the computer has. Remember, the slower the computer is, the more time it will take to accomplish tasks. So whenever you're choosing a computer, look at the speed. Whenever you're choosing between two computers, first compare their speeds. And at times, it depends on what you're going to use the computer for. If you're going to do some tasks that require faster processor, then you have to pick a computer that is faster. So computers are speed. Point two specifically talks about the accuracy. Computers provide error-free results based on a principle called giggle. That is the garbage in, garbage out. When something wrong is put into a computer, even the output will be wrong. So if you put in something right into a computer, even the output will automatically be right. So computers do not make mistakes, but it is the Killer of the user. Whenever something wrong has been put into a computer, even the output will automatically be wrong. Point three talks of the versatility or versatile. That computers can perform more than one task at the same time. You've seen this before. You can use a computer to type as well as when you're playing music, as well as printing out some document. So you can use a computer to do more than one task at the same time. Diligence or endurance. A computer can do a task repeatedly without getting tired. For example, the computers that are used by DJs, they can be used to play music the whole day, the next day, the following day, but they will never complain to the owner that I'm basically tired of playing music. So they can do a task repeatedly without getting tired. Automatic or spontaneous. Computers can do tasks without supervision. For example, if a computer is programmed to, add, to do a certain task, it will do that task without or with minimal or no supervision. For example, those machines that sell sodas in town, you put a coin there. They give you a soda that you want. So they were programmed to do that task. So no one is going to be there supervising these machines or computers. So they can do a task without any supervision. We continue. Point number six talks of the storage. Computers can store information for a long period of time. But remember, we say that computer stores information either temporarily or permanently. If information is stored on a computer on RAM, it is temporary. That means that it will get lost if power goes off. But if it is stored on a hard disk, then it will be retained permanently. And also that thing depends on how you handle the computer. If you handle your computer well, then the information retained there will be kept safely. For example, you have to install antivirus software. To prevent viruses from destroying your work. In that case, you'll be able to keep that work or information for a longer period of time. We continue. Number seven, communication. Computers have the ability to communicate to each other. For example, you have your WhatsApp. Another person has the WhatsApp. You keep communicating to one another. Those are computers. They have the capability of communicating to one another. 
it can either be wired or wireless, near or far away. Then adaptability, that computers can comply to every environment and settings in which they are put. Whenever you put a computer or wherever you put a computer, for example, if you have a computer at school, we can use it for study purpose. If you find a computer in the bank, it is used to count money. If you find a computer in hospital, it is used to monitor the patient's condition. If you find a computer at school, it is used for making report cards. So it will comply with every environment and settings in which they are put. Whenever you put it, it can fit there. That is what we call the adaptability. Then processing. Computers can process large sums of data, i.e. they can add some figures, they can subtract them, divide them, multiply them, and also make other large computations. So a computer can process large sums of data. For example, you have a calculator. You have a, let's say, computation you cannot do with a head. You put it there, but in less than a minute, it can process it and give you the results there and then. Then number 10, computers need user input. They need instructions from the user to enhance the process. After all, a computer is only a machine. So they need you as the user. You're the one who make the hardware. You're the one who enter the data there. You're the one who make the software for it. So they need user input for them to process or make the task accomplished. Then lastly, we have artificial intelligence, whereby computers can be programmed to assume capabilities such as learning, reasoning, adaptation, self-control. For example, those computers can respond as if they were thinking by playing chess, recognize handwriting, etc. You've played computer games with a computer, then a computer overtakes you. For example, you've played draft before, the solitaires, but a computer uses the software. Remember, machines do not think, but it uses the software which is installed there to assume the capability of thinking and learning. Nowadays, computers use voice recognition. I can talk to my computer. I can say, for example, in my compu computer, in my car. You have a car, but it has a computer. Radio, you can say radio on. At home, you can say lights on, lights off. So they can be able to assume that thinking and reasoning and adaptation. Then self-control. You've seen robots. They think like human beings. So thank you for watching. This has been the characteristics of modern computers. See you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share the link to your friends. Bye-bye, I sign out.